my I'm on my phone. <laughs> You Did you want me to try to share? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marisol? Are you ready? I don't know if I can share from my phone or not, but I probably I'll try. Okay. It looks like you're signed in twice, Luke. Um, do you see? Is it one of them? The uh, the picture of the bully? Yeah. yeah. That you're looking at. That's yeah. That's not. I don't think that's me. It says your name. Yeah, I think that's the NJMA account. Oh. Yes. Who's hosting this time? Me, Maricel. I'm sorry for the sound. Well, then why are we seeing two uh, NJMA hosts? You and then and then Luke with the uh, Boletus Olivia Sporus. Oh, that, that one is gone. All of a sudden just disappeared. I still see it. I, I, I disappeared right in front of my eyes. My, my there's, you know, we, we change things in uh, in Zoom because uh, to allow uh, people to um, conduct these sessions without having us to pay extra X number of dollars a month for additional users, because mm -hmm. we had to do that in, in in December, but we were able to uh, circumvent that problem in the new year. Good. Um, okay, so before we start, I just want to make a little exception. So because uh, Luke has to go, so he can go first. And then we go with people who have their names on the chat, and then we go with people who send emails. I can see your screen, Luke. You see my screen? All right. Mm -hmm. That's a good start. Do you see my, uh, my yes. URLs now? Yes. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just picked out four of them. Four of my These are my favorites from this year. I'm going to start from the bottom. These are from my two trips this year. So I really don't have anything from this area. So I had two trips this year. One was to Greenland and one was to Northern California, Oregon. So this one is uh, like, you know, like, you know, like, like an Omphalia on Bellafera. So it's one of the, I've never seen this. Apparently it's a pretty common one. So it is a Basidio that is lichenized. So these mushrooms that we see here are uh, actual, you know, gill fungi, like normal mushrooms that we normally find, but they're associated with this algae that's growing on this rock. And um, it seems like they're more common in the Northern latitudes because I see them like, like on iNaturalist and MO, I see them up in Canada and stuff like that a good bit. I never seen them, although I, I don't. Do they grow here in Jersey? I found them a few months ago in the Pine Barrens. Yeah, I thought I, mm -hmm. I thought that I'd heard that they grow in the area, but I had never seen one before. So this I found in this town, Avenata, Greenland. That's actually a state of Greenland. Um, There's no town there. It was just in this little area outside of a town, um, growing. <laughs> In the tundra, this is like north of the Arctic Circle. So it was growing in a in in this area with these uh, trees, which are birch trees. You can see the leaves growing on here. Um, yeah, and those and those trees get no bigger than you know a few inches off the ground. Nothing, nothing is more than a few inches off the ground up here. So it 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 doesn't have um mycelium or hyphae it, it just the fruiting body grows out of what a thallus or is it yeah. just algae i guess that i guess thal um i'm not sure if thallus is the right word for it it's growing specifically out of this algae oops this algae that's growing on the ground this green stuff it is lichenized with that and it's growing out of that but it's always associated. I mean, it's definitely a lichen. It's so it's producing the, it's producing fruit bodies on the substrate, which happens to be its host. Correct. And I guess the, being lichenized, it is consuming the host. Consuming well, the, the nutrient, sugars, consuming the, the sugar, the consuming the sugars that the host is producing. Right. Uh, I'm guessing there's some type of fungal layer surrounding the algae there at the base that would form a thallus. So that that green stuff is is both fungal and algae. 
Oh, yeah, that makes sense. My guess. Yeah. I, mean, I, okay. I mean, most lichens have a layer where there's an algae in the middle and then they're surrounded on either side by, by fungi. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And then they produce fruiting bodies. Right. Like we see the, we see, like we see the lichen that grow around here with a little cup fungi all over it. But there's more to it than just the cup fungi. There's, you're right, there's the fungal cells. So. Nice. So that was one of them. And then the other one that I picked, this one was not anything super spectacular, but it was a Rusla. And I actually called it Nana, Rusla Nana, the alpine brittle gill, which is really common up in the uh, Arctic in high alpine regions in the Northern hemisphere. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a whole bunch of uh, more than one species, since that's usually the case with Rusulas. Um, but all the different guides that you look in for Arctic fungi have this Rusula nana. So it's the telltale of it is it starts out like venaceous red, like you see here in the center, but it very quickly bleaches white. It's these white spots all over it. And kind of, kind of a creamy underside to it. And it's like super spicy hot. <laughs> So that's a I think, I think I think nana means small, and there's a, a bird species called betula nana, which is typical of the alpine Arctic landscape. Mm. You know, and uh, maybe they share the name because this one is mycorrhizal, but with the, with the uh, so it's a namesake. That's what it is. Yeah, because that's quite the, possible. That would yeah. be that would make that would make sense because that's the landscape as far as trees went was all betula and uh, salix. Did you see any lexinum? Yeah, yeah, I did. I picked you, a bunch you, of like. In fact, I was eating the lexinum. You saw lexinum in the tundra. Yeah, I sure did. Oh, great! Yeah, it's it's also birch associate. Then was it uh, brown capped or red capped? Brown capped. Brown capped. That's what I thought. Okay. Yep. Do you have a picture so, of that uh, one? Um, I do, and my I I didn't I didn't collect to put it in here though. Maybe if I can find it quickly, I'll show it. Um, I did collect a bunch of them though, and I bought I bought some seal meat, and I made a stew out of seal meat and lexinums. Oh, that's that's great. Uh, if you can share eventually, I mean, maybe with me personally, your uh, your observation. I'm I'm very interested in taking a look at that because there are very few uh, lexinum species that grow that far, and I think they're all uh, from section Scabra. You know, the brown. Okay. As, a, as as a matter of fact, I think I brought a sample of the lexinum back with me. I'm pretty sure I did. Oh, have, that's great. I have a dried sample. Now, now, of course, it was just dried in the sun up there because I wasn't taking a dehydrator with me, but. Right. So how well, large is it? How large is it? Because Nana means dwarf, right? So why is it called dwarf, Nana? Well, bir because birch is small. You know, that species of birch is, is, is a dwarf because uh, it grows in, uh, in very hostile environments. So it never grows to full size like they do here. Mm -hmm. Everything so, is miniature, miniaturized up there. Okay. Because of the harsh conditions and scarce resources. Latitude. Okay, so I have two more observations. These were from Northern California and Oregon. This is from Oregon. This is an Amanita calip calyptroderma. And I just thought this was a really, this is one of the, the nicest looking mushrooms I saw this year. So I found this in a, uh, a conifer forest. I think it was Douglas fir in Redwoods. So I assume, I assume it was with the uh, Douglas fir, not the Redwoods, because I think Redwoods don't really host much in the mycorrhizal species. So I guess they call these kakoras. Now I did not collect these to eat. Although in hindsight, I kind of wish I had grabbed one. But they have this telltale, I guess that's the universal veil that's on the top of it that's creating that like, almost looks like somebody poured cream over it. Is, is the cap margin striate on that? Because this, this is a Caesar, right? It is striate. If you kind of, I zoom in here, you can kind of, I think you can kind of see a striation there. I think this is in section Caesarea, isn't it? 
Yes, they are. They, the striations are typically in these very shallow and short. So oh, when they're oh. young, you don't, almost don't see them. There you go. You can see them a little better in that one. Yeah. This was a stunning mushroom. This was, and it was big. If you, I don't know if I have a good picture. So what's that? Six, you know, eight inches tall, eight, wow. nine inches tall. Very cool. Yeah, I think this is one of the mushrooms that's actively hunted for the table out west. Yeah, that is what I had read after after the fact. <laughs> yeah, the other one is the spring one, which is called the Verni Corcora, I think. And uh, yeah. So you didn't eat those for some reason, right? No, you know, I saw them. I thought I knew what they were, but then I, I didn't really have a way of bringing them out. I was a few miles back in and... But now in hindsight, I wish I had grabbed one and tried it. I don't know when I'll get a chance to do that again. But, but anyway, I got a few good pictures of them and you know, it was just cool to find them. Okay, I got one more from that area. This was from Northern California, uh, Guanapinia helveloides. So this one was really cool. Somebody, somebody told me that they'd seen this out here in New York or Canada or somewhere, but that, that was kind of offhanded. I'd never seen anything like this. I think we found it in Horseshoe Bend one year. Really? Okay. Once, yep. And this was very gelatinous. It was a jelly. It was very gelatinous, but they were pretty big. They were a couple inches tall, maybe three inches tall. Um, I think one of the telltale signs of the, or the telltale, uh, physical characteristics of this is that offset like funnel shape how it kind of like is like a pet like a petal and it kind of turns into a funnel to one side look yes i don't think so and i'm pretty sure it's a basidio it is. i don't know yeah I don't know. oh yeah yeah it's a basidio oh okay oh and i like is, that photo yeah, these were really cool. This was in a redwood forest, although I, I forget now. I had read not many things are actually mycorrhizal, not, not ectomycorrhizal with redwoods. Um, but there were other trees there, like Douglas fir. But these were there were big trees there. I mean, trees that were bigger than anything I've seen in my life. And then, of course, some really cool mushrooms back there. Don't they uh, make these into like candy? The candy this? What um, do with this one? I've never, I don't know. I've never heard of anybody oh, eating okay. this specific one, but I have heard of people using other like similar like jelly textured mushrooms like this, make them into candies. What are those? Um, those, those white ones that grow in the hemlock, the tooth, the jelly tooth fungi. Pseudohydinum gelatinosum. Yeah, those. They make them in the candies, or somebody does. Yeah. That's what the inside of it looked like. It was really mm. kind of gelatinous on the inside. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep, that is it. So that's yeah. what I had. I, that's why I rustled up for my favorite things I found this year. It was a little dismal in Pennsylvania this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's nice. Anyway. So Great, thank, you for letting, thank you for letting me share them and I will hmm. searching for the uh, stop share button on my phone. There we go. All right. So if anybody would like to share directly from your own screen, you are welcome to write your name on the chat. Nobody's there. I can share something. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so can I have the screen? Yeah. Okay. Okay, can you see it? It's, it's working. Yeah. Okay, this fungus is interesting because it's a parasite oh. of the lantern fly. Yeah. And it's called 
I think sugar fungus. Let's see if I can uh, enlarge. Okay, can you see it? Yeah. And it really looks like icing, like cake icing. <laughs> so how about all the pictures here? Yeah, yeah the first one is, is probably the best one. And here the description of it. Actually, it's not a specific parasite. It attacks also other, uh, other insects. And this fungus is fine, uh, you, know, you know, everywhere around the world. Okay, I'm going to show the description of it. Um, come on. Yeah, here we see, this is the wiki. Okay. We see other insects that are attacked by this parasite. Okay, and uh, okay, so my picture is better actually than this. Let's see. How come I cannot do go to the previous one anymore? Okay. So here's my picture, you know. So I, I was looking for it, you know, and I was, um, you know, I, I, and I was lucky to find it, you know, in my, you know, close to my home, you know, in you know, the next town. You know. So it's kind of neat, you know. First, I thought it was, it looks, I was wondering if it was the honeydew, you know, because they circulate a lot of honeydew, but the honeydew doesn't have like a bright white color like this. Great find, Hervé. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Merci. <laughs> Merci de rien. Il n'y a pas de quoi. Bon, je vais vous... I'm going to uh, drop... Uh... Stop sharing. Okay. Okay, anybody else would like to share from your own screen? Just say your name, because nobody's writing names on the chat. <laughs> in the chat. Anybody else? Matt, Marisol, if you want to wait for a few minutes, I can email a few yeah, mushroom observer observations. You have time, yeah. Okay, okay, I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, so I can go to the email and uh, invite people from there. So let's see. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, you see my emails? Yes. Oh, okay. Dave, Dave, I already have um, emails from you. Oh no, that was the answer to my question. No, 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 no. Can you record? Okay, Virginia. Are you there, Virginia? Virginia? She is. Um, yep, yeah, here I am. <laughs> okay, this is a um, moist uh, culture from a moist culture that I collected um, the leaves in Kingwood Township at my in my sister's yard. Um, and I didn't get it started right away. I, and I, I collected it in April, but I um, started the culture in uh, in the fall later. So that's what it looks like. And it's called Fissurum bivalve because they look like clams or oysters standing on edge. <laughs> so <laughs> that's one of my favorite ones because I used to study marine biology too. So, um, and you can. Go. And that's a little more a close up of it, how it stands on edge and the opening is on the top edge. Huh. What's the opening for? What's the idea there? 
then probably where it splits to let the the spores out. I don't think I've seen any open ever, but that's that's what it looks like. Okay, so I broke off a little piece of this one, and you can see that the spores inside are dark brown, mm -hmm. and you can see the white specks are the lime nodes that are that are found inside among the spores. So that um, the dark one on the left is a lime node. As you can see, the capillum is sort of sticking out a little bit from its side. The, um, the lime is all granular. And the other patch on the right is probably a piece of the side of the, the peridium, um, just a clump of the lime, um, the lime that it's made out of. So it has dark brown spores. Um, and they they measure about nine and to ten microns. So that's all there is to it. Right. Hmm. Any questions for Virginia? Your sister's backyard is very fertile. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You find I, I so I, much stuff in I her backyard. I find so much. I think I counted it up once. I might have over 20 um, from her yard, and mostly around the edge under the trees. <laughs> and it's probably the same anywhere else, everywhere, except, you know, you have to have people looking for them. <laughs> and a lot of these don't show up unless you... Um, put them in the moist chamber culture. Now this, you probably could find this one if you really got down on your hands and knees and, and you know, look for it somewhere. <laughs> but the chances of finding it aren't that great, I guess. What time of year does it fruit, do you know? Well, since it's a moist chamber culture, there's no way to tell from that. But I would say that most of them fruit somewhere between June and um, September. I mean, there's some that are earlier, some later, but majority July and August is the best time to look for them out in the field. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dean. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, Dave, are you ready? Yep, Marcel, I just emailed uh, to your email address because okay. I wasn't sure which one to use. And since it sounds like you're moderating, I used your address. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it came. Okay. All right. So it's a lichen. But this is one of these um, beard lichens. And Karen's not here tonight, but she might have some, some things to say about it. Usually you only find these beard lichens in rather pristine environments where the air is very, very uh, clean. Uh, but this was found on, the, uh, on a stick along with some other lichen um, in, a, in a rather suburban setting. Um, you know, not that far from a fairly busy highway. So uh, Karen thought that was kind of interesting. I proposed a species name. Um, usually Jason Hollinger comes on MO and has something to say about these lichens, but uh, I don't think I've got any hits on this one yet. Um, it's, so these, oh, go ahead. It's definitely Osnia, but I, without examining it more closely, I wouldn't be able to tell you which species. I mean, yeah, Karen, Karen looked at it. She, she, she had a proposal, which I put on Mushroom Observer. The name she gave me was an old name and Mushroom Observer um, said that it was deprecated in favor of a new name, which is, is the one you'll see on the observation. Here's a close up though. I mean, you can see some of the, some of the details here. This is taken through a loop. But I don't know much about identifying lichens. I just thought it was interesting, an interesting thing to see. If Dorothy was here, she might have an idea. 
No, I'd have to look back at my old <laughs> photos and notes and everything. It's been a, num a few years since I was looking at them where in, in, at Eagle Hill in, um, because there's Usney all over the place up there in Maine. <laughs> uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, Karen spent a, a, a bit of time with the, um, <laughs> is it, um, Bredo. What's that? What's the lichen book? Um, I forget. The big lichen. What is it? Who is it? Brodo. Oh, Ernie Brodo. Yeah. Yeah, Ernie yeah. Brodo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the big, the big book that it, it's, it's, it's a big book. <laughs> she it's spent a, a fair amount of time with this and came up with um, um, there's, there's a proposal on here. I thought, where, where can yeah. we see the proposal for the? Yeah. No, but there's more than just Usnia. Uh, maybe down lower, you can see oh. what I, what we came up with. Or what no. she came up with, and then there was a new name. No, no. Oh, I it's wonder why not we're not seeing the. Um, no, I wonder why we're not seeing the other. Where's the part with the proposals? Oh. Oh, I. You know what? I may have sent you a link. Oh, it's down below. That you have to go down pretty far, I guess. Below all the photos. I don't know. I guess not. Huh? Well, I don't know. Dave. I don't I yeah. don't think you I don't think you're logged in. That's why we cannot see all the information. You have oh, to log in into your yeah. you have mm -hmm. to log in into your uh, uh, MO account. No, but I just emailed this observation. So to, Maricel um, needs to, to log so in. So Maricel actually exactly. I, I thought uh, you were Maricel needs to log in. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. Right. My sorry. Right. Thanks, Igor. Oh, Igor, while, while we're waiting, um, I have a question that either you or Jason might be able to help me with. Um, or if, if uh, John or Nina is there also. Uh, I'm editing this um, spreadsheet on the Amanita, um, Amanita's recorded uh, in New Jersey. And I think I'm doing something backwards. So I'm going to have to backtrack and fix what I'm doing, I'm pretty sure. And that is that under the first, the first column is called species name. That's the heading on the column in the worksheet. And then there's another column called accepted uh, or NJMA accepted name. And I've been putting in the species name what I think is probably the best name to apply and I've been putting in the NJMA accepted name column, the name that seems to have been uh, supplied by NJM or by, by the person who found it um, or, or by the uh, identification made at the foray or whatever. I think I'm doing it backwards. I think probably under the first column species name, that's where we probably wanna put what it's labeled that's where that's where we see the name on the label and if it's stored in our barium. Right. And under and under NJMA accepted name, we want to put our best rendition of what we might call it currently. Right. Is that correct? Yeah, the, the first the first column should have all names, whether it's accepted or or synonyms or European or or whatever. That way we know that one points to whatever is in the NJMA column. Okay, yeah, so the, the first column is probably what the thing was labeled as originally, and it's probably, that's probably what's in the herbarium. So that's, so we want that, yeah, okay, I was doing it backwards. So I'll just have to fix, I'll just have to swap out those, uh, the contents of the cells in those two columns, and then I'll be okay. Okay, I wanted to make sure that before I went on and did any more, um, I, I should be done in a day or so, actually. Okay. It's a fair amount of work going yeah. through yeah, I only started working on that a little bit, and I left the first column in the NJMA column, and I added a column for Nomen Mix um, for the current accepted main that they have, and then I was, um, and then there was another column for um, species von Gorm, I think. I don't, I forget if that was there. So mm -hmm. I, I left that column, and I'm just wondering if I should put, because one of them I had to look up on GBIF, you know. Because they weren't agreeing, and uh, whether I should have a column for GBIF. <laughs> oh. 
they yes they, are you ready for yes this? Uh, okay yeah go ahead yeah now now i think we'll be able to see no uh, but i didn't log in because i don't remember my password oh okay well this one i'm sure of Right, so okay, there was no alternate proposal for this one. Cruci Billum um Laeve. Laeve, I guess is how I, I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. Um, but this I was able to get the idea that that notice the inside of the cup is smooth, pale, no striations. Um, these little eggs, uh pedicles, I think they call them, um are connected by a very short sort of umbilical cord type thing, uh, very short. Um, there's a photo showing it actually. Um, and the spores, I, I, I smashed one of the, uh, one of the eggs and, and scoped um, what I smashed and I, I found spores and everything points toward this crucibillum leve. So this is something you can find in the winter um, when there's no snow on the ground, you'll find these things on wood chips and in uh, mulched areas, uh, they persist for a long time. And the spore dimensions really were a perfect fit. So that was sort of the, the last thing that I needed to, um, to be confident about um, proposing the species name and, and nothing else. So if, if you're, you know, you'd be surprised if you're like at a bank, I. I don't know. Do people go to banks anymore besides me? Yes. Um, yes. And, and do things like cash checks. Um, and and if you're doing that, like you look out your window and there's like spread wood chips, you know, you'll see stuff like this. So this was on mulch. This was not on chips. This was on sort of this mulch that had a lot of woody debris in it. Mm -hmm. And it is very common around here. And it's the only one that is yellow when it's younger. But a few days ago, I posted one and somebody said that it may be parvulum. So there are two that are very close. You will have to measure the spores and compare if it really matches the, the size. I could never know because I, don't, I didn't have the specimens to check the spores. So I will never know if it is Laeve or parvulum? Yeah, I forget if I ran into that other species name, but if I did, I would have compared spore dimensions and, and, oh, and this, okay. you know, I've I got them listed here, seven to 10 by three to 5.5. Mm -hmm. It's like a total bullseye for what you're supposed to get with this, oh, okay. uh, you see a bullum le mm -hmm. So some of those photos are taken through a loop. Mm -hmm. um, I think the I think that one probably is the first one. Yeah, and the second one is so these are really small. These um these these little bird's nest cups are um you know maybe maybe five millimeters wide. Um the the little eggs, the pedicles are maybe a millimeter wide. So small, small, small. And one of the photos here, if you sc scroll down, one of the photos shows um, the the little cord, yeah. that one right right there. Yeah, if you blow up that one, you'll see. Oh, uh, oh, oh, you need. Oh, right. It's I want you to do that. Okay. Well, you can almost. Oh, you can see it. There it is. See the little cord coming out. Yeah, on on this one up up the top one. The one get bigger. Cord is sticking out of the top. That's what that that's what holds it in the nest. Eventually, I guess that cord breaks and then it flies out, and the spores are uh, they're either on or inside these eggs. I'm not sure, but I just I just sort of smashed a little bit of the egg and scoped it and found the spores. They yes. So the spores are inside the pedivial. I'm not sure if they're inside or if they're uh, on the surface. I think they're inside, though. Or, or like they're in, sort of buried in the context near the surface. You know what? I did read that, and now I forgot what I read. They. Mm -hmm. the are they supposed to separate? Are they supposed to separate when they're mature? I, I well, those two are stuck together. Um, Guys, excuse me. Excuse me. 
Yes, go ahead. No, it's okay. Fine. Oh, I'm sorry. Did, did you have a question though, Marisol? No, I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, yeah, that those two were just, I couldn't get that one to stop sticking to the other one. So I just took the picture like that because it was so hard to get the one to stand up the right way and to see the little cord that once I got it positioned to see the cord, I didn't want to try anymore. Um, hey, anyway. hey guys, I, I, I think, I feel like Marisol was trying to explain to us how the spores are actually produced inside the little eggs. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I thought I thought you were asking Marisol. I'm go ahead. All right. What I was trying to say was that the the spores are inside the pedicels, and this <coughs> core that is here is compressed. When the drop of water fall inside the nest, it dislodges the pedicels and they are ejected upwards, and this stretches. I, I made an experiment here in my house and I was in love with them for a few months. And this stretches uh, maybe a few centimeters. I couldn't believe it. And then when it stretches, it is aiming to tangle on something, touch a surface and then they tangle in there. And eventually the outside the skin, if I can say that, uh, disintegrates and then the spores are released. So they work their way out to the surface, sort of. Is that is that what you're no, saying? No, no. The 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 skin of the peridios disintegrates by the brain wind. I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. I, I see. The skin they, falls they, apart. Oh, yeah. Eventually. Oh, okay. Okay, but thanks. Because, yeah, I, I didn't understand so, how that worked. So, Marisol, can I? Like, so what you're saying is the raindrop pushes the petioles out and like pops out, and that little string is like a lasso, it like grabs yes. something yes. and pulls the egg towards like the new substrate, and mm -hmm. then it disintegrates after it lassoes. Mm -hmm. Pretty wild. So, so, if you go on Mushroom Expert, he has a photo of one of these petioles stuck by the uh, the cord to the leaf of a dandelion. And what he explains is that herbivores will eat the leaves of the plant and carry the spores elsewhere. Yeah, but how the spores get out of it? The peridiols. No, they tangle, but, but I never read that anywhere. Does it say that here? Uh, you want to read by yourself, guys? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a chance to read? Hello? Yes, I, I was able to read that, Marisol. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. I probably did read this and then I forgot. Uy, I missed that. But thank you. Uy, I, oh no, oh, sorry, I missed that. You, that was your third observation day? Excuse me? That was your third, number three? I think so, yeah. Yeah, that was three, yep. Yeah, I guess there's one more here. Yeah. Um, well, there me. actually was, I thought there was another one as well, but that's okay. I just posted oh. this so that people see that contrary to what you might read in field guides that gallerina marginata occurs in the fall, uh, it is found beginning in the fall through the winter into the spring as late as late May. So it's good to know that, especially if you're interested in looking for the uh, velvet foot or winter mushroom um, Flamulina velutipes, which superficially does resemble Gallerina marginata. Uh, there are some differences, morphologically speaking, um, and, and you can learn to tell the difference pretty easily. And if worse comes to worse, you can take a spore print. And um, the spore print for this guy is going to be rusty brown. And 
and for Flamuena velutipes, it is the print is starkly white. It is like as white as white can be. And um, anyway, I just I found it, you know, just like last weekend during a warm spell. So I thought it would just be a good thing to show. Yummy, it. yummy. Hey, Dave, <clears throat> I just want to say that uh, today's category is not uh, current finance. It's the best of 2022. Oh, it's the best. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So you'll have, we'll, we'll probably have oh, to do this I, again next time because I may be yeah. able actually to present some observations of my own. And, uh, you know, it's more exciting to see, you know, mushrooms found in summertime as opposed to what's being found. Well, today. yeah, F Flebia radiata is not one of my best finds of the year okay it's like, <laughs> it's like two month old flebia radiata um that's still producing a lot of spores that was the th kind of interesting thing this thing's probably been on this end of this lock for two months I'm, I'm pretty sure it didn't fruit like last week um and it's still actively producing enough spores to um to form an, a fairly significant spore print and and that's and I did measure the spores and their bullseye for Flebia radiata. So they look like little sausages. Uh, I think that word is allantoid um, is the word though, the technical word that means looks like a little sausage. <laughs> so <clears throat> there they are. They're pretty small spores actually up to about maybe about five microns long and the widths are only, you know, maybe one and a half microns or a little bit more. So very small spores. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know what? I probably, you know what? Probably because I haven't paid my dues yet. I didn't get the email this week. Um, uh, J Jason just sent me the email. So, so I was able to come on. Uh, but I but I forgot that it was best finds, but but I didn't have time to go through all my finds right at the moment anyway. But you th Igor, you think we'll do that again next week? Should we do that next week? Best I hope finds? so. I hope so. I hope we uh, uh, do this again instead of you know uh, showing our current finds, which are going to be very you know uh, unexciting given the uh, time of the year. So yeah, maybe. Yeah. Those things were not all that exciting. That I yeah, Galarina marginata is not exciting. I, I agree. It's not <laughs> exciting. <laughs> um, um, okay, so okay, so if we want to do that next week, I can certainly come up with. God, it'd be hard to pick out five actually. Yeah, I think we should. I think this is going to be more exciting than the uh, going for the dog drum collections of of today or you know this week or next week. Uh, dried out polypores is about what I can think of right now. Not very exciting. Oh, okay, so so no, like all dried up uh, dialyopsis confrigosis. No, 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 please. <laughs> do, do, do we have a top? Do we have a topic for next week? Well, I think we do. That, that's going to be it. You know, best finds of twenty twenty two again. I have a couple I could show. Okay, go ahead. Are they best of twenty twenty two? They are. Excellent. <laughs> so this was my first photo of 2022, Mycena corticola. And I found it on, this is on a Norway maple. And then in October, I found it out on another Norway maple uh, a mile away. And this is my last photo of 2022. This wow. is Mycena corticola. This is a little desiccated. When it rains, these rehydrate. So I, this, this was the coolest mushroom I liked this year. This is uh, another one I found in my neighborhood, Luco caprinus. Uh, Cestipes, and yeah, and I, I really like the texture of the cap on this one. These uh, scales uh, 
brush off, you can see it on the grass around it. The wind brushed the mush, the grass up against the mushroom and they just rush, rubbed right off. And then uh, this was another one I enjoyed finding. This is Umphalatus illudens. This is the first time I saw it. Second time, notice the slugs had been busy. Third time. And you can see the slime where the slugs just feasted. I thought that was pretty funny. It's a nice sequence. Yeah. I like this photo of the Mycena sort of silhouetted in the hollow of a tree. Uh, this is in West Virginia, Cantharella cinnabaris. I went to Holly River State Park with my wife. This was uh, Hygrosopy punicea, also in that state park. Very pretty. These are large. These are like uh, nearly four inches across the, the one in the middle there. This is one of my favorite photos of the year. This is Romeria uh, formosa or maybe Botrytis, I think. I'm not sure, but this is very, it's, it's just budding. You can see it's just opening up. It's a great shot. Like I think Botrytis is a Western species. Uh -huh. sure. So so it's probably Formosa then. Well, but but yeah, but then there's like a half a dozen others that are very similar. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that one's a young one too. Yeah. Yeah, very young. Yeah, but 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 um Formosa is definitely a you know possibility. Western. I think the tips on Formosa turn pink when they're mature. Yeah, that's what the guide um, was saying. Pinkish, yeah. But and that I one's think, really young, so that might, you know, might not just be at that stage yet. Yeah. And this was one of my favorite photos of the year. This is Lycofoliota decorosa, also from that state park. That's a nice beautiful photo. shot, yeah. Yeah, good in situ where all of the mushrooms are in focus, Wow, very nice. Yes. Yeah. Anybody would like to share or do you speak sharing some more? That's it, Mike. Yeah, that's it Mike, for me. Mike, on that Mycena corticola, um, on Mushroom Observer, that name has been changed. Now, you can take that with a grain of salt because sometimes people jump the gun on Mushroom Observer and change names a little prematurely but that mm -hmm. now they're calling that now mycena meliigena M -E -L meliigena yeah i think it's m-e-l-i-i-g-e-n-a or that's close at least mm -hmm. okay i'll check that out thanks dave sure you're welcome anybody else so I have a mushroom to share, but I found it today, but it's more than a dried polypore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think it's a cool find, but I, I need help getting to species. Um, so I collected this a few hours ago. I believe it's in the genus Talipocladium. Mm -hmm. um, we have three species in Talipocladium in New Jersey, and because of the shape of the head, I think I can rule out Ophioglossoides. I think it's either longis segmentatum or capitatum. Um, here's a zoomed up shot of the head. Here's a, a cross section of the head. You can see these little uh, tubes uh, underneath uh, all of the bumps on the outside of the black head. Uh, here's a close up of the yellow base. And then I, I think the key to distinguishing these two species are in the spores. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a shot at 100x uh, under the microscope. And this one here is in pretty good focus. I have one more shot of the spores. I wonder if I can make this bigger. Jason. 
Yeah. Actually, that's a fragment of the spore. So this is a, a spore fragment? Yes. Uh, because the spores are very long and they fragment in several pieces. I got photos of that. So the length of these fragments isn't going to tell me much. I need to find an intact spore. Uh, I you have to make other preparation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not sure about that, Maricel. They might the measurements might be provided for for each for segment. The, for I'm, the, not, I'm yes, not sure. Yeah, I may be I wrong. Think, yeah. yeah, I think that you know what? I'm going to check. I have another window open. I'll be right. Because I have done microscopy of those, and you can see the spores when they are they are very long, and then they break like that into several pieces. I do not know why. Well, I was thinking that this was Tulipocladium capitata, based on it having shorter spores, less than twenty five, as opposed to up to forty to sixty. But if they're just broken up segments, then. I could be wrong on that. So what substrate does this grow on? So this is, uh, this used to be in the genus Cordyceps and it parasitizes false truffles. But I found this one, I didn't know at the time, so I didn't dig up enough to see if there was another fungus deeper into the into the ground, but this was in a sandy upland forest in an abandoned blueberry farm in Atlantic County with uh, uh, white oak, uh, pitch pine, uh, sweet gum, American holly. I found it in the pine barren soup. And I, yeah, mine came uh, as. Longi, what's the name of the species? Longi something? Longi, longi, uh, longi segmentatum. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. And I dug out the, the, the false truffle. And, and I brought it home and I washed it and it's orange. It's beautiful. I have observations in my naturalist of that. So I, I just found it found Longis segmentum on Michael Quebec, but it's tra it's translated from French to English, and the syntax is sometimes hard, you know, difficult. I'm not sure if they're giving the measurements of the entire spores or of the segments, but I'm guessing it's the measurement of the segment because it's not really all that big. I let me just look at that again. What they had. Um, are you looking at motion um, observer or wet? Micro Quebec. Say 30 to 65 by 3 to 5. That sounds like a segment, 30 to 65. Because I think that the strings of, seg of segments are really, really long. Mm -hmm. You know, like over well over 100 microns, if I remember correctly. I, also, I think Longus segmentum is more apt to have the shiny black head. But I'm not sure about that either. Let me see. See what it says. Yeah, here. And there yeah. is one that has yellow rhizomorphs connecting to the truffle. It has yellow rhizomorphs? Yes. I mean, this one this has a yellow base, but I didn't see any. Oh, because you didn't dig in it. I didn't, yeah, I didn't dig deep enough. And I do know, yeah. You have to really go down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does anybody else would like to share on your own screen? Um, okay. Anyway, the um, uh, Talipocladum um, capitatum, um, the measurement given out for spores given on um, Michael Quebec is like 16 to 28. Um, length. I think they're talking about one segment. I'm not sure because it looked on the on your photo there, Jason. It looked like those 
the things that you were calling the spores, which as Marisol pointed out, are probably just segments, um, they look pretty long actually. That was only a hundred power, right? And uh, well, a thousand, a thousand X, a hundred times 10 with the objective. So that's. Oh, a thousand power. Right. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Um, what, what, what was your estimate on one of those things? A little Did over 20. A little, a little over 20. Yeah. Well, that would be capitatum then. Capitata, which is yeah, really yeah, that's what it sounds like to me. I think they're talking about the segments when they give those measurements. I usually find longus segmentum, so that's interesting. I haven't found it in a while though. Okay, so do we agree or is already agreed that we uh, talk about the best finds of 2022 for the next meeting? Jason? Uh, is there any? Yeah. I think Luke is going, or maybe Mike is leading next week. Mike, do you know? If we have a team already, or we can go with this one. No, we, we don't have any team for next week. Yeah, it was TBD, so we can do it again if we want. Yeah, right. I just don't have any any good finds. Oh, for okay, 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 okay. So yeah, and I can't do some because I am sick, and so I don't. I am being sick for a few days, so I can't put my test together. So I don't have any. I can't to show anything today. So maybe for next week I can have. Yeah. Time. So. So we'll do best of 2022 next week. And if people find cool finds, we can do them too. Oh, okay. So yeah, nice. All right. So ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Good night to everybody. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Au revoir. Au revoir. Adios.